Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint a simple beach shoreline on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So I'm going to go over which brushes that I will be using for this beach painting. I will be using a 3 quarter inch flat wash brush. These are the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes by the way that I have linked to this video. A number 4 round brush. A 12 bright, which happens to be a Royal and Langnickel brush, a, a fan brush, that one is also Royal and Langnickel, and I will be using a round bristle brush to get some of the texture on the waves. You don't have to use that round bristle brush if you don't want to. Um, you can also cheese the same technique with like a flat brush. Um, I also used texture in this. So instead of actual sand, I used snow text. I didn't have um, sand texture to work with, but I just used this snow text, which is used in some of my winter paintings to like make snow texture. But I used that for the sand and then painted sand color over it. And it actually made a really nice sand texture in our sand area. So you can have fun and play around with texture in this. You can even glue little seashells on uh, your sand area to make a mixed media painting. So there's a lot of different directions you can go with this. You can add a palm tree, a um, Adirondack chair, a uh, beach volleyball, seashell, starfish, whatever you want, but I'm going to keep it simple. We're going to kind of focus on uh, painting our waves and little and the shoreline. We're going to start by painting the sky and I have my palette already loaded with cerulean blue and I have a piece of painter's tape on the canvas already and that's going to divide our sky and water uh, the, the painter's tape, the top part of the tape is about nine and three quarters from the bottom of the canvas. Uh, so estimate you don't have to have that exact amount. I just didn't want my horizon line to be in the center. I wanted more water than sky. So I'm going to start by loading my three quarter wash brush in the blue. And I'm going to start at the top. A really simple gradient, basic, basic gradient painting um, blending technique. So basically I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to go about halfway down the canvas with it. So using left and right strokes all the way across the canvas. Um, there was a little teeny bit of water on the brush that helps to get that paint to flow better. So left and right strokes. You want to work relatively fast so that we can blend this in time. And then load your titanium white load your brush in the white without rinsing the brush. So there's still blue on my brush, uh, but not a lot of blue. So if you needed, needed to wipe the blue off, you can. So, so white out the tip, start below your blue and blend up. So you wanna always start your color below the color and blend it up so that it blends better versus if you started right on the color, it might be too much. Um, so start below, blend up into your color. And I'm not going to take this white too far up. I did blend all the way up, but I don't want the top part of the sky to be light. It should be dark blue to light blue. And then when you're done, you don't have to wait for it to dry to pull the taint painter's tape off. You can just gently pull it off. And if it bled a little bit down below that line, that's okay. Because with acrylics, we can always paint over it and our ocean color is gonna be darker anyway. So next, you are we're going to draw our shoreline. And I always like to draw where I'm going with my paintings. Um, in ocean paintings, I'll take a line and I'll do like a wavy line. This particular one is going kind of diagonal. If you wanted your ocean to go more horizontal, you can do that. And I'm going to do two lines because one of the lines is where my ocean is going to stop, where I'm going to stop painting the blue. Um, and the other one is where the shoreline is going to hit. So there's a part where our sand is going to blend with our ocean and the sand is going to blend up to the first line and the blue is going to blend down to the bottom line. So that in between line is where our sand, our blue and our sand color are going to mix together. You'll kind of see what that, how that goes. So after drawing your two little wavy shorelines, you're going to load your your palette in phthalo blue and turquoise. And I love the color that these two colors make when they mix together. So this is the Liquitex Basics phthalo blue. It's kind of more of a green tone almost. 
Um, so it mixes really nice with the turquoise color. So when you mix those two together, you get a really pretty dark teal color. So about equal parts and load your brush in that color and then paint horizontally across. This is going to be the darkest part of our ocean. It's furthest out, it's deep, it's far away. And we just want to make sure that we're using the tip of the brush to create a nice crisp line across the sky. If you want to be um, perfect about it, <laughs> um, even painter's tape isn't going to make it that perfect because um, it still might bleed under. But what um, you could let the sky dry all the way, then do your painter's tape and do your ocean and then pull that up. Um, but you might run the risk of your teal blending up into the sky and we don't want that to happen either. So just the best you can. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to go down about an inch and a half and with this pretty teal color. If you go down too far, no worries. We can always make it lighter or paint over it. But we want a nice dark little area way back here, away from where our far away waves are going to be. And then we're going to start blending in our white. This is going to get our color to be more of an aqua turquoise color. Before I blend the white, I'm going to just do turquoise. So we have um, our darker bluish teal color, but now we have more of a turquoise color. So you can see our ocean color is changing here, kind of towards the middle part of our ocean area. It's getting closer. And I'm going to go down a little bit further with this, blend it up so it's not too much of a color block, so it's more of like a gradient. And then I'm going to, I almost halfway down, and I'm going to introduce my white here pretty soon. So maybe down just a little bit further. Um, occasionally, maybe grab a few little strokes of your blue and then grab your white. So when you grab your white, just like in the sky when we blended the white, you want to start below your color and then you want to blend it up. You just want to be really careful when you start blending it up. I hold my brush a lot light, lighter when I'm starting to blend so it's not going to overpower it too quickly because um, then we'll get frustrated and, try and want to make it darker again and then uh, that won't be very fun. So just gently blend it up. Remember, there's going to be a lot of like wave and water texture in this, so it doesn't have to be a perfect gradient. And if there's streaks of like darker colors in there, that's okay. So we're going to go down with our white and we have this really pretty light aqua color by now because of this white. And just like in the sky, our ocean's getting lighter as we go down. And when we get to our shoreline, so if you did like a diagonal shoreline like I did, you want to kind of make your strokes go in more of a diagonal fashion when you get down to that area. It's more like a wavy sort of contouring direction. And then I'm gently blending it up. So I stopped at that top line that I drew. That's where I'm going to stop with my blue. And I'm going to introduce my sand and paint the sand from the bottom of the canvas to the top. And our bottom line we drew is going to be our shore that's going to overlap our sand. So we're going to go ahead and add um, unbleached titanium and burnt umber. Those are the two colors that I use for my sand. Um, if you want to make a sand color, you can mix red, green, and yellow to make a neutral color and play around with that and add a little bit of white in it. Um, but I like to use this unbleached titanium with a little bit of the burnt umber. So I'm going to mix about one part brown to three parts tan color. Does not have to be exact, but I want it to be a little bit dark. Um, and if I rinsed my brush, but if there's still a little bit of turquoise on your brush, that's okay. It's actually to our advantage to have a teeny bit of turquoise in there because this is going to blend anyway with our blue. So I'm working kind of fast because what I want to do is I want to be able to blend my blue down into my sand. So I painted that area. So this area down here, and I'm doing wet on wet blending. So that turquoise area where we stopped painting, I'm blending that sand just a little bit up into that area. So our sand blends with our ocean and then blending it down. I'm not going to go below that line because I'm going to paint a lighter color below that line. So this is like our wet sand area where our uh, sea foam is covering 
because we'll see some of the sand below the very thin layer of water that's folding over our shoreline. Okay, so we'll kind of define that part again using the tip of the brush. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and grab more of the sandy, the lighter sandy color and paint the rest of your shore area below it. I chose to make it a little bit lighter so I can differentiate the first line and that second line, but this is the sand and our water's not touching this part at all right now. So, but um, I'm still painting it in kind of long wavy strokes going in the direction of that shoreline. Next, we're gonna create some shadow for our sea foam. So this is gonna be the first step in painting our little tiny waves that are along the edge of the shore. And I'm going to mix a little bit of burnt umber with a little bit of turquoise along with whatever's left on my brush. So there's a little bit of sand on my brush, a little bit of the turquoise left on my brush. Um, but ideally we want to make like a, a grayish, brownish, bluish color by mixing the brown with turquoise and a little bit of the beige and a little bit of the white. I'm going to load that on the tip of the brush and I'm just going to gently outline that line that we drew in the beginning. This is that bottom line that we drew at the very beginning before we started painting our water. And then I'm gonna make up some lines here. So this one's going to go, it's relatively like the first or that second line that I drew, but it's gonna go a little bit closer to the first line. And maybe another one up here so these are all shadows of pieces of sea foam that are coming into the shore. Just using the tip of the brush, I'm just gently doing some very kind of wavy, loose lines. As we get further back, it's further away and there's not so much sea foam further away. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the brush now and I'm going to start painting some of our little pieces of sea foam along the shore. So I'm gonna switch to a smaller flat brush. This is the 12 bright brush. You could do this with a three quarter flat brush, but I found it a little bit too big and cumbersome to use for this technique. So I'm gonna use my clean dry 12 bright brush. And I don't want to start with too much white um, because I, I want to be able to highlight and brighten it later. So I want to start a little bit darker. So I'm just going to mix a teeny bit of turquoise into the white to make a very light turquoise. And then at the bottom left, I'm going to start painting the edge of my sea foam. So this is just kind of tapping the brush, just doing like a dabbing technique with the brush and going in kind of a circular direction. Think about how the sea foam, how it rolls on the shore. So we want our stroke to kind of go in a rolling sort of circular direction. So this piece right here might overlap that other portion of our sea foam. Again, just tapping the brush in like a rolling direction. If you catch some of the extra blue in there and if the white varies from like a light blue to a lighter white, that's okay. Um, again, we don't want to go bright white right away because we want to be able to highlight this later if we want to. Our shadow is still showing, so still have some of that darker gray line showing. We're not covering all that gray line. The sea foam is rolling over that shadow, but we can still see the shadow. An alternative to this would be to paint the sea foam first and then the shadow underneath. So you can kind of do it the opposite way if you want. I'm just going to keep going over our shadow line with that rolling direction and we have our first layer of our sea foam. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off with a towel. So without rinsing it, just wipe it off. And with this brush that is now dry, so before our paint dries, I'm going to kind of 
go back over my stroke and kind of drag it down a little bit further over our shadow, but I don't want to cover that shadow up. I still want that bottom part to be dark. So kind of blending it dry brush style, just going back over that stroke and just kind of dragging it down across. Kind of disguises that shadow a little bit more, but it doesn't completely cover it. Just dragging that paint down. If you need to wipe your brush off again, you can wipe your brush off again. Just going back over all of that. Dragging it down very gently using the tip of the brush. Then I could grab another little bit of white and go back over some of the topper part of our sea foam and just kind of brighten it. Not the shadow part, but the top part. Just a few little dabs of white along the top part and that'll brighten that up a bit. Give it some highlight. I can go in and I can make some of this larger. So if I want this part of my sea foam to look like it's rolling larger, almost making a little mini wave in that area, you just do kind of bigger, more rounded strokes. So this one, I just kind of brought it up a little bit higher by rolling my brush up a little bit higher. So I'm just grabbing more little bits of white and kind of bringing up some of this higher. You can keep layering it or you can keep it simple and leave it as the first layer. Go ahead and extend this one out a little bit so it's kind of thicker. Again, just the, the little dabs on the tip of the brush going in a rolling direction. So now we're going to get into starting these like water lines and I'm just using the tip of the brush and these lines are going kind of in a wavy direction because of the way that water is right here too. So just very loose thin lines to create some water texture in between some of the sea foam. Freshened up some titanium white so I can make some brighter white lines but I'm just very gently with that white, just kind of go in there and like touches of brighter white in there. And then a few little water lines. Again, you can simplify this or you can keep going and keep rendering it. Then we're gonna do kind of a, not a big wave, but just kind of a medium, smaller size wave, but a little bit more in the distance. And we are going to again start by doing the shadow. So I made a shallow, shadow color again by mixing a little brown with our turquoise color and a little bit of white. So it should be like a greenish brownish color. Um, it should be uh, more of a grayish dark color than the actual ocean that we're painting over. So I'm just gonna kind of paint like a shadowy area. Um, it's gonna kind of start out large and then kind of go thin and then kind of go away. So that's our shadow part of our wave. And then I'm going to do the same thing like what I did with the sea foam. So I'm going to wipe the brush off, grab the white, and if you want to mix a little turquoise with the white you can, but because there's still that other color on my brush, that's fine. And we're going to start at the top of the shadow and do like um, rolling strokes with the tip of the brush, just dabbing the brush. Then 
then wipe your brush off with a towel, wipe the tip of that brush off, and then kind of drag your white paint down over the shadow. Grab your white and then go back over it. Add some more white at the top, just kind of still the dabby kind of rolling motion. Um, I'm going to grab my bristle brush at this point. So this is that um, the kind of the natural hair brushes um, and load that in the white. And when you tap it, you can create more of your splashing texture of the wave. So I'm just taking that brush with the white. You don't want to load too much white on the tip of the brush, so when you load it, you might want to kind of wipe some of it off. But you're just tapping it, and that creates your different texture on um, the edging of the wave. And then, like, I'm switching between brushes, so I'm using the, the little 12 bright, and then I'm switching to the bristle brush. So I'm switching back and forth, um, creating like different kinds of, um, some of the strokes are kind of dabby, the rolly strokes, and then some strokes are like the tapping um, the little bristle brush, brush strokes that creates the different textures. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit of the blue, so either the turquoise or a little bit of the phthalo blue and white, and just do some water texture below that wave, just a very, um, with a darker color than the actual water. So just kind of left and right strokes. And then go back with my bristle brush, add more splash texture. Add a few more strokes of water texture. So I'm switching back and forth a lot between my 12 bright and my bristle brush. So I'm just a few kind of lighter strokes down here. I'm gonna put another piece of sea foam below this one. So grabbing my um, 12 bright and just kind of tapping it um, with the white. I didn't do a shadow for this one and that's okay. I can always add shadow under it later if I feel like it needs some shadow, but I'm just kind of tapping it and doing like a gradual, very thin sort of sea foam line. And then I'm gonna do some of my waves that are further out. So these ones are not gonna be very thick or with a lot of details, but I'm still gonna do that tapping brush technique, um, but they're thin, they're smaller, they're far away. Um, they might have some variation with how far stretched they are. I might like drag the paint down just a little bit with them, but they are further away. And the ones that are way back here are very, very fine. So I'm just tapping this brush very lightly to create some very thin water reflection lines. It could be waves, it could be from the sun shining in the water. Um, but the ones that are closer, much larger, I can go in and do some kind of wavy sort of water lines as I get closer to the shore. And then I'm gonna go back with my bristle brush and do some more splashes. So I extended that splash up a little bit higher. This is just, this is the pure white at this point. It's not mixed with any blue, so it should show up super bright white. So now I'm going to switch back to the 12 bright, little bright brush, and I'm gonna make our shadow color again. So the little bit of turquoise in the teeny bit of the brown and I'm adding a little bit of shadow under our like bigger piece of sea foam back here um just very very lightly on the tip of the brush kind of gently gliding that skidding it across the canvas so it's not super dark but just gives a little bit of dry brush kind of shadow um below that area and then we can put a little bit of shadow under this piece as well. Just a very subtle bit of shadow. And then back with our little bristle brush. So I might have went too crazy with these splashes, but it was fun using this texture brush. So you, um, it's an option if you don't like that look or technique. You don't have to do that many splash textures.
Then I switched back to the bright brush and did a few more water texture lines, specifically behind here where this kind of dips down. I'm gonna have my water kind of curve a little bit since that water level is kind of raising back there. So I had the lines kind of curve um, in that direction. And then a few more little bits of uh, water texture lines. Remember, if you're working way back here in the distance, you want those lines to be a lot smaller, thinner, more denser, kind of closer together versus if you're further down, the lines are kind of thicker and um, a little bit further apart. Not all these lines have to be pure white. You can add uh, some turquoise or blue into your lines um, and they don't all have to be straight going in a horizontal. It's the ocean so it's wavy. Our lines are kind of going in a wavy direction but not too wavy, just kind of loose, kind of um, uneven. And then of course going back in with some more water texture. Um, so we're almost done with all of our ocean, uh, tech, ocean texture detail. I'm going to show you here in just a little bit how to add a sun in your sky and we're going to put some high cirrus clouds in our sky as well. I'm going to rinse these two brushes off and for our sun, we're going to need a round brush. I will also be using a Q-tip, uh, to help paint our really tiny circle and blend our paint together. So I'm going to use titanium white and a primary yellow. You can also use like a cad yellow or any yellow you want. I'm going to start with the round brush. And I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want my sun to be. I'm going to put it in um, kind of the middle left area of the sky. You can change your sun to a different position if you want. And then this is primary yellow. You can use any yellow, you can use cad yellow, cad yellow light, whatever kind of yellow that you want. Took my Q-tip, loaded that into the yellow, and I'm just painting that in, mixing that yellow with my white. So the reason why we just didn't do yellow and um, the white helps with the coverage and makes that yellow super bright. Um, yellow tends to be kind of a see-through color, so you want to like paint a base layer white first and then add your yellow. And then if you want to kind of blur your sun a little bit, um, this is optional. If you don't like the way this looks, you don't have to do it. Um, but this brush is dry and I'm just kind of smearing the edges of my sun out a little bit so that it like fades out into the rest of the sky. And then I can get my Q-tip and add just a teeny bit of white right there in the middle to make sure that middle part of the sun is the brightest part. Next, I'll show you how to do the high cirrus clouds. Completely optional if clouds aren't your thing or you want your beach day to be clear and sunny, you don't have to do this. Um, but this is kind of a unique technique using a fan brush. I normally use fan brushes for like shrubbery and trees, but clouds, you can use them to make high cirrus clouds. Um, the trick is that you want to make sure that your brush is dry with only a teeny tiny bit of white paint. Cause if you put too much white paint on this, it's going to be thick and not thin and cirrus cloud like. Um, so load the tip of the brush in the white and then wipe your brush off and you just want to kind of gently drag it. So if I want my cloud to go in a horizontal direction, I'll drag it kind of to the left and the right. But if I want my cloud to kind of go wisping up 
diagonally kind of swirled up in the sky, I would have my brush kind of go in that direction. Um, I can kind of change the angle of my brush to use all the bristles or the full width of the bristle. So just doing like a nice variety of different angles with these high cirrus clouds. And I can even tap the brush to create some textured uh, little high clouds. So next we are going to set our fan brush aside. We're done with that. And if you feel like your painting's finished, you can stop here and be done. I decided to do a little bit of the sun kind of sparkling in the water in the distance. And to do that, I used my round brush. Uh, this is a number four round brush. And I'm just with the white, very, very, subtle little dots way in the distance and they gradually get kind of larger down. I'm not going to make that go all the way down our ocean, um, but just a few little bright little spots way in the distance, just under the sun area that gives it that sparkling effect. Then I went in and made a few more water texture lines kind of here and there, kind of fill up this upper right area that's a little blank. There's not much going on in that area. And I added a little bit of texture to these waves that seem to be a little bit closer. So just with the white and just kind of tapping the brush right at the top part of those waves. This next step is also optional. I'm gonna show you how I used snow text to create sand texture. So if you don't have certain materials, sometimes we get a little creative with things. So I, I decided to experiment with the snow text. Um, it has a feeling of sand texture. It just comes out as white because it's snow texture. So a way around that would be to apply it to our sand and then paint the sand color over it. So we could have done this before painting the sand initially, but um, I decided to do it this way. So there's a couple ways you can apply your snow text to the canvas. You can use a palette knife. Um, you can use a brush. You can use three quarter brush. I decided that I was gonna use my hands to apply it. So it's kind of a fun tactile <laughs> texture activity. So just apply it to the bottom area and just kind of, it sticks very nicely. Um, some of it falls off, but for the most part, it'll create that texture and that texture will stay. I'm just gonna apply that to the bottom area. And we don't have to wait for it to dry to apply the paint, but I will wash my hands real quick. And then we're going to get our three quarter back and um, do our mixture of the beige and the brown. So you want a little bit more beige than the brown. So it's about three to one, uh, three parts of the unbleached titanium, one part burnt umber. And I'm just going to apply the sand color over that. I'm going to do kind of a different brush technique here. I want it to be a little bit more textured stroke like, kind of wavy, short textures. Um, going to let some of that brown still show through to make it look like that sand in that area might still be wet from the shore hitting it. And 
um, that color is going over our sand texture. So just kind of short diagonal strokes. And see that sand texture. So when this dries, it uh, stays on very nicely, well, relatively well. The sand does not fall off. If you scratch it, it will, but it doesn't fall off. If you hang your canvas, it's going to stay mostly on the canvas. I haven't tried doing a varnish over it. I imagine um, if I varnished this painting, it would help that sand be fixed more to the canvas, but I haven't tried that yet. Um, and what I'm doing here is adding just a teeny bit more brown kind of closer to the sea foam where that shadowy area is. And then if you always accidentally paint over maybe some sand over some sea foam, you can always go back and add some of that to let it overlap it a bit. If you wanted to glue little seashells to the bottom part of the sand area, that would look really pretty. Um, but pretty much the rest of this painting is touch-ups wherever is needed. Uh, this is the conclusion of how to paint a basic beach day painting. Hope you enjoyed painting this with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.